this is Christy Garner, and this is my film analysis for V for Vendetta, the symbols, colors, and themes. Alan Moore and David Lloyd's dystopian graphic novel, V for Vendetta, was adapted as a film in 2005 and directed by James McTeague. Distributed by Warner Brothers Pictures, it was produced by Silver Pictures, Virtual Studios, Anarchos Productions, Inc., and DC Vertigo Comics. Much like its graphic novel counterpart, the film serves as an allegory for government oppression, tyranny, and the importance of individualism and freedom. Many aspects of the plot can even be linked to historical references such as Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime along with their infamous concentration camps. And here you can actually see um, an image of where one of the main protagonists, Evie, is having her head shaved much like the Jews had to have their head shaved during the Holocaust. The director uses many techniques to enhance the viewer's perspective of the film in regard to his allegorical motifs such as symbolism, color, and theme. One tactic McTeague uses to enhance the message of the film is through the use of symbols. One of the main ever-present symbols in the film that becomes this idea is the Guy Fox mask, V-Dons for the duration of the film. Guy Fox has become known as the face of the gunpowder plot of November 5, 1605, which was a failed attempt to blow up the House of Parliament and England's King James I. Although Fox was not the leader of the plot, he has gained notoriety as the trigger man who was meant to detonate the gunpowder. Fox's face has become so symbolic throughout history that to this day the United Kingdom still celebrates Guy Fox Day every November the 5th in which straw versions of Fox called Guys are burned in effigy. Thus it is this image that V adopts in the film causing him to initially be recognized as an anarchist. He essentially becomes the mask, never taking it off, his true face never revealed. Although partly worn to hide his burned and disfigured face, the mask becomes symbolic of V's intentions to finish what Falk started centuries earlier. And you can see a picture here of V all dressed in his costume as Guy Fox. By the end of the film, every citizen is a guy, wearing their own mask, inevitably taking them off simultaneously after V's victorious blowing up of Parliament to reveal their individuality. Copies of the Guy Fawkes mask can be found everywhere now, especially online, available to purchase for cheap. The face of Fox as a mask has become symbolic of postmodern revolution. The V symbol that V consistently leaves throughout the film is another symbol evident in the film. The simple red V becomes V's trademark, leaving it wherever he goes. Not coincidentally, the V symbol is symbol to, similar to that of the anarchist symbol. Instead of the capital letter A encapsulated in a circle, V's symbolic V is a capital V inscribed inside a circle. Considered to be an anarchist himself, it is fitting that V would choose such a similar symbol to represent his presence, his V for vendetta against the fascist regime, regime that he is planning to destroy. Taking anarchy one step further, V even declares anarchy his mistress and claims that she has taught me that justice is meaningless without freedom as he prepares to blow up another symbol in the film, the Old Bailey, which was the central criminal court of England. Tony Williams states that once symbolic of impartial British justice, it has now become as redundant and useless as the current American Supreme Court. It has become a useless symbol in this fictional fascist society. However, this building is symbolic to V as shown when he states, the building is a symbol, as is the act of destroying it. Symbols are given power by people. Alone, a symbol is meaningless, but with enough people, blowing up a building can change the world. In fact, James R. Keller even says, the film warns against the willful sacrifice of evil liberties in pursuit of safety from terrorism, suggesting that such concessions may ultimately necessi necessitate protection from the protectors. Whether the viewers agree with his methods or not, his blowing up of the Old Bailey signifies that this is the only the beginning of his anarchistic reign of terror over the Norse fire regime. Much like how symbols are used throughout the film to enrich its overall message, 
McTeague also uses colors not only to function as symbolic, but also set the tone of the story as it progresses. The main colors he uses to do so are blue, red, and black. Blue is mostly known for representing calm and peace. This is in reference to one of the beginning scenes in Jordan Tower, the broadcasting center, when V seizes power of the main television station to broadcast his own personal message to the citizens of London. Almost everything in this scene is blue. The walls, the broadcaster's shirt, etc. This can be interpreted to mean that because of how much television is part of citizens' lives, the government sees using the color blue on television as a means to keep the public calm. This is just another method by the Norse fire regime to control the population. Even the lead inspector, Finch, wears only blue dress shirts throughout the film. The heroine of the film, Evie, even begins her journey often wearing blue. However, the hue continuously gets darker as the film progresses. Evie's journey throughout the film causes her to lose her fear as well as her innocence, thus represented in the color of clothing she wears. And you can see a picture here of Chancellor Sutler, who is basically the ruler of London. And you can see how they have a blue curtain in the background here um, that they portray on TV in order to keep that calm and peace that I was talking about. Likewise, the colors red and black are predominant throughout the film. One example of this is the Norse fire flag of red and black, which can be seen in the steel to the right. Red, of course, is bold and reminiscent of blood, love, revenge, and passion. As an interesting side note, these are also the colors of the Nazi flag. V's symbolic signature also almost always appears red. Even when V delivers his televised speech at Jordan Tower, the curtains that serve as his background are red in contrast to Chancellor Sutler's, who you just saw, was blue. This could be understood as the ambition and decision to rebel. A chief red item that reoccurs throughout the film is that of the red Carson's rose. Normally, red roses represent love and romance, but in the film, they represent another signature of V's revenge and violence, as he always leaves one after he has extracted revenge on one of his previous offenders from his time imprisoned at the Lark Hill Detention Center. Black is equally bold in signifying darkness, elegance, misery, and evil power. As for black, the protagonist anti-hero is always dressed in black. His cape, hat, gloves, and boots. Representing evil power, the governors in the film are always dressed in black suits as well. Even the room where the higher-ups in the government meet with on-screen Sutler is completely cloaked in black. Sutler's military men as part of the Norse fire regime, are also dressed in black, much like that of the black clad SS that were parading through the streets in um, the Holocaust and World War II. At the end of the film, when the citizens of London all gather wearing their own Guy Fox mask and clothing, they are all also carrying black umbrellas to fend off the rain. McTee successfully used all three colors of blue, red, and black to further deepen reoccurring themes throughout the film. Tying in with the use of symbolism in the film, the power of symbols themselves serve as a reoccurring theme. Both the creators of the graphic novel and the director of the film show the immense power symbols can have over a society. According to Rejuric Davidson, V is not just a hero in a mask, he is an embodiment of an idea, the symbol of opposition to the fascist government. It is mentioned multiple times during the film that V represents an idea, not a man, and ideas cannot be killed. This is what makes him so powerful and his acts so effective. It is the idea that he implants into the minds of the citizens that causes them to all come together by the end of the film on the one year anniversary of his blowing up of the Old Bailey to witness the explosion of Parliament. The only difference is the citizens inevitably all remove their mask once Parliament is blown up to reveal that they are not just ideas. They are independent, individual citizens with their own ideas and beliefs. They are no longer willing to live under the control of a totalitarian state. Naturally, the central theme to both mediums, the graphic novel and the film, is freedom and anarchy. It is V's belief that anarchy is necessary in order to bring about freedom to the people. 
As Tobias Ebrick states, V for Vendetta combines several elements which are indirectly linked to the Holocaust as a central reference point, but which also merge with other iconic incidents, emblematic images, and intertextual references. Imagine Genocide draws on images known from the Nazi concentration camp to convey contemporary themes. The audience sees these similarities to what they know of the history of World War II and the Holocaust in the film, primarily with the Lark Hill Detention Center and the trenches of graves which they disposed of those they experimented with and tortured during their imprisonment. Not coincidentally, those who were imprisoned consisted of anyone different from the norm. These included homosexuals, minority religions, minority races, and anyone in opposition to the uprising fascist regime of the time. As Davison states, the Lark Hill Detention Center has obvious references to the Nazi death camps and medical experiments. Scenes of bodies lying in open graves recall the footage during World War II of Auschwitz and the other concentration camps in Poland. Davison goes on to say, For McTeague and the Wachowski brothers, the neoconservative politics dominate today are a close relative of totalitarianism. For much of the film, the parallels suggest that the kinds of neoconservative politics today might easily lead to totalitarianism. In other words, the film is a warning to those who view it, a warning to not only allow events such as these to occur again. After all, as V states in the film, people should not be afraid of their government. Governments should be afraid of their people. McTeague effectively transfers Moore and Lloyd's message of importance of individuality and freedom onto the big screen by combining all the aforementioned elements, including symbolism and colors. And this is just a list of my work cited that I use for my paper for the film analysis. Thank you.